In March 2022, Astro House started shipping the third generation of the Freerite Smart Typewriter. The biggest change with this generation are the arrow keys which allow navigation for minor editing. This will be a quick unboxing and review. I've sped up the video for the unboxing just to compromise for those who don't like to see things taken out of boxes and for those who do. I also got a set of the black keycaps. It comes with white. I'll be talking about those later. I also got the hard case. As mentioned in other reviews, it does seem to be very well built. I specifically didn't buy the first or second generations. I did buy the Freerite Traveler because it did enable minor editing. To me, it would be more distracting to actually have a typo or a misspelled word I knew about and not being able to correct it immediately. It does not come with a wall charger, but it does come with a uh, USB-A to USB-C cable. I'm sure most people watching this review are somewhat familiar with the concept of the free write. It's supposed to be a distraction-free writing experience. Again, the first and second generations did not allow uh, any editing. Now we'll be looking at this keyboard. This is the main feature of the device. These black ABS keycaps. Um, I'll be comparing these to some PBT keycaps that come on a Duragod Taurus keyboard. Now the Taurus is a pretty good keyboard out of the box. It is also a mechanical keyboard. It has the Cherry MX Brown switches. And another change to the third generation Freerite is they went to Kale Box Brown switches. I honestly can't feel much of a difference. The Kales are supposed to be smoother. If anything, I'd say maybe they actuate a little higher. Now you can see the OEM profile that comes on the Freerite to the left compared to the Cherry profile keys on the right that came off the Taurus keyboard. Now since the keyboard is the major feature of the free ride, I did a sound comparison between it and the other mechanical keyboard. Note there's not a lot of tuning you can do to either of these keyboards because the switches are soldered in. really hear that space bar. In the future I may look into doing some lubrication on the stabilizer see if I can quieten that space bar down. Now the Taurus is considered a pretty good keyboard out of the box without any tuning. Overall both keyboards are very good. Alright, it takes a minute or so to power up. I did decide to get it on charge. Now after it boots up you'll be immediately prompted to start a document by pressing the two new keys. And this was the same experience I had with the Traveler as well. And there are many good reviews, uh, including some from Freerite themselves, as far as how to go on Wi-Fi and link to your Postbox account. So I'm not going to take a lot of time with that. Now the biggest improvement with this, in my opinion an improvement, is the ability to do minor edits. Before you would have to backspace thereby deleting everything back to where the edit would be. This was supposed to actually discourage you from editing, which I can see in for different people that might work fine. Like I mentioned earlier, that would not work for me. Now the arrow keys are controlled either by the new key with the arrows or new shift in the arrow keys, which are printed um, on the size of the A, S, D, and W. Now this is just inconvenient enough where you wouldn't want to do large scale editing on this. But it is good for its intention, which is minor editing. Here you can see I'll adjust the backlight 
Again, the Traveler does not have this feature. That would be a good upgrade for the Traveler. I'm not going to go into too great a detail of all the different keys you have to press for the functionality. It's all well laid out in the instruction booklet that comes with it. None of it's too hard. One of the things I saw on previous reviews was the delay in the e-ink screen updating to what you're actually typing. Hopefully you can get an idea. It did seem faster than the Traveler. That was my first impression. I have no way to test this in nano or microseconds to prove it though. I think this would mainly bother a very fast touch typist that only looks at the screens and doesn't look at their hands. Now you can't hear the Traveler keyboard as well, but I tried to exaggerate my hand motions. Hopefully you can get some feel of the delay. Now I thought I'd also show you the document navigation feature. This seems to be the same as on the Traveler. I do not know if it was the same on the first and second generation smart typewriters. Just press re respective number key and it'll take you to that document. Also I thought I'd show you the FreeWrite plugged in directly to a USB-C port on a PC. You can navigate through and just like it was an external hard drive. You can click and drag to save to your computer. You cannot delete the file. You can make edits and save to your computer, but you cannot save it back to the free write. So this may be a good solution for those not wanting to do the cloud sync. Both work perfectly well. Here are the specs off the website. I hope this gives you a pretty good idea of the overall concept of the free write and any changes from the previous generation. While doing some requested sound edits, I thought I'd also give you an update. There's been a few firmware updates to all the free write devices. And it seems like the delay, the keyboard to on-screen delay has been significantly reduced. 